Tonight, public servants take to the streets as they protest against the proposed new taxes. You are not fit to run office. CIM members of County Assembly vote to impeach Deputy Governor William Odwall. And also in the bulletin, public hearing on the finance bill enters its home stretch before being tabled in Parliament. Good evening. Welcome to the Spotlight News Bulletin. I'm Marion Gashohi. Public servants on Monday held a peaceful protest against overtaxation by their employer outside a parliament building. This comes amid President William Ruto's efforts to have the 2023 finance bill passed that will see all of them surrender 3% of their salaries to the finance, uh, the construction of affordable houses. Leaving the University of Nairobi Chancellor's Court early morning, the protesters, drawn from the Kenya National Union of Teachers, Kenya University Staff Union, University's Academic Staff Union, Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Union, and Kenya Union of Domestic Hotels, Educational Institutions, Hospital and Allied Workers, among other major unions, marched in unison to Parliament buildings armed with their petition against the proposed Finance Bill 2023. According to the union heads, the bill will greatly hurt those earning little income as opposed to those with good paychecks. Earning a salary that is beyond 8,000, their percentage is coming down. And naturally for the members of parliament, they are paying 0.003%, not 3%. Hawa watu wanatulagai. Sisi kama hasla hapa chini, diyo tunabeba mzigo wa housing levy. Na tunakata, no to have taxation. The leaders have also voted to fully engage their union members in negotiating for better terms as opposed to the previous cases of cowardice. There will be no room for taking envelopes. Everything we are doing for you must be done on top of the table. We don't want secrets when you are dealing with the workers and especially when you are targeting workers, money. Your money is your money and nobody should touch your money without consulting. However, the House has been cautioned Again, is passing the bill with the union heads threatening to fully run the protests until the government takes into account their pleas. The ground is saying no. In the unlikely event it goes through, the strike will be on the next day. Yes. Yes. And we want all public sector unions to be on the lookout. Azimio la Umoja members of parliament, led by minority leader Opio Wandai, have pledged to fight the proposed finance bill, noting that the ordinary mwananchi is set to suffer. We are going to do whatever it takes yes. to ensure that these punitive taxes yes. are not okayed by the House. Yes. We are going to ensure that oh. this finance bill With the ball now thrown on the court of MPs, the civil servants are now counting days before they fully suspend their services until they are fully heard. Samedika, Look Up TV, Nairobi. And now former Mungiki leader Magna Njenga has been released by an Akuru court on a 100,000 Kenyan shilling bond with an alternative of 50,000 shillings cash bill. While delivering his ruling, Nakuru principal magistrate Kipkirui Kebelion restrained Njenga from making statements relating to the case or contacting prosecution witnesses, failure to which the bond would be cancelled. Njenga is charged along 11 others for engaging in organized criminal activity. Audrey Cherotich reports. In yet another court appearance, former Mungiki leader Maina Njenga presented himself to the Nakuru Law Courts Monday morning after a directive by the Directorate of Criminal Investigations last week. Njenga, who was accompanied by his team of lawyers Martha Karua, Ndegwanjiru and Simon Bugwa, was released on a 100,000 shillings bond and an alternative cash bail of 50,000 shillings. One, 
that the ninth accused in submitted to a bond of 100,000 shillings or an alternative cash bail of 50,000 as the other co-accused. Two, the accused is restrained from making statements either through press or in public writings which make any direct reference to this case. Njenga denied the seven charges leveled against him before Nakuru Principal Magistrate Kipkirui Kibelion. Among the charges leveled on him were being a member of an unauthorized group, namely Mungiki, having records relating to the group and addressing an illegal meeting at his home in the Wanyororo area of Bahati Sub County in Nakuru. He could just he jumped any person, any organ, any individual. And desist and resist from making such comments that are derogatory and prejudicial to our client's case. The other charge stated that he attended the said illegal meeting, allowed the meeting to take place at his home, and provided his premises for the meeting. In Jenga's defense, NAC Kenya Party leader Martha Karua faulted the DCI for referring to Njenga as a former Mungiki leader. That an accused is presumed innocent until proven guilty, but I've brought that angle for you to see that even the police know he is a former leader of such an organization. Therefore, the charges, the police will provide the best evidence that the charges before the court. Audrey Cherotich, Look Up TV. And now moving on to the next uh, story, Media Owners Association of Kenya is among the 10 entities who have recently opposed the 2023 financial budget during the final day of public participation, which is being presided over by the National Assembly Finance and the National Planning Committee. As Shadra Carrera reports, the National Council of the Non-Governmental Organizations and Human Rights Groups are among those who rejected the housing levy. You, you said you are supporting Mang. As Financial Bill 2023 public participation comes to a conclusion, non governmental organizations, in conjunction with human rights organizations, were among the 10 groups who have recently rejected the bill. We commend the government uh, for its commitment to buy. The groups that appeared before the National Assembly Finance Committee also punched holes into the government proposal to have 3% levy deducted from employee salaries to cater for affordable housing, terming the project unsustainable. And we propose that this provision, or rather this proposal, to be deleted in entirety, uh, just in, in a view to ensure that the developers who are under the affordable housing program, together with the beneficiaries of the affordable housing program, I, are able to benefit from this cost reduction. When those 1.6 million people get jobs, assuming a million houses are made, this is the last room being made. When it is finished today, tomorrow, what happens to those 1.6 million people? They'll be jobless and back to the drawing board again. Media Owners Association of Kenya, Kenya Property Development Association, and the Coca-Cola Company oppose the introduction of the exercise duty on imported raw materials, stating that the move will negatively impact local industries. The government will then deduct a bit of that increase to go into the housing fund, and then the rest of the increase goes to the, 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 the employees. So we see what would then happen in that case is that there would be a situation where government is actually getting this into the housing fund, but as far as the employees are concerned, they are, they are actually their net take home. We acknowledge that uh, the timeliness of these proposals might not be ripe, because we know that some of these materials are key ingredients in construction, and cement clinker constitutes about 70% of the cement. So if you combine the two proposals, number one, you are reducing the importation, uh, you are leaving uh, duty on importation of cement. That means you are already, of course, constraining the supply. And at the same time, you are introducing a levy on clinker, which is used for manufacturing cement locally. And it has been seen where you have a predictable, stable tax environment, 
we are able to put in more investment capex, whether it's new production lines, um, to produce more. But what we've seen is where there's such instability, investment is now packed, and investors like us, we, we want to motivate investors. The entities pleaded with the National Assembly to reject the bill, as the members of the committee retreat a report that will be tabled before the floor of the National Assembly where MPs will determine whether to make amendment to the bill or otherwise. Shadra Kareria, Look Up TV. Thank you, Kareria, for that uh, comprehensive uh, report. CI County Assembly has passed a motion to remove Deputy Governor William Woodwall as Deputy Governor of CI County. 38 members of the County Assembly supported the motion in a bid. A uh, matter submitted by Gordon Onguru, Assembly East Ward Member of County Assembly. Odwal was rejected by the committee during a special session on gross violation of the Constitution and the law, abusive office, and dissemination of wrong information. Section 33 of the County Government Act 2012 and the study order 72 of the County Assembly of CR Study Orders. Yes, the uh, mover for the Act 2012 and the Standing Order 72 of the County Assembly of CR Standing Orders. Mr. Speaker, sir, in consideration of the provision of Article 73 1. A, Roman 3 and 4 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. They have referred as the Constitution in so far as it connotes the manner in which state officer is expected to exercise assigned authority. Mr. Speaker, whereas Article 71 1 of the Constitution obligates a state officer to behave in, a, in all sense in a manner that devoid of compromising public or official interest in favor of personal interest. Mr. Speaker, sir, aware that a state of <coughs> having taken and subscribed to both of office, pursuant to Article 74 of the Constitution, is duty bound to adhere to the values and principles of public service as imposed in the Article 232 of the Constitution, most importantly, practice of equitable provision of services. Me being part of the assembly, I was given 300,000 shillings. Mr. Speaker, how I wish the person who gave out this information can vividly come out and prove who and who were given money and for which purpose. But for the sake of decorum, for the sake of respect, people must respect this house. Therefore, I beg to say, to say that I think the decision of Honorable Guru to bring this motion was timely, that now the Deputy Governor has the full time to try to now convince the House because we still have about two or three steps. And if this is made in full clear, of the whole public and the whole CIA, all the four states are invited, and that he is given an opportunity to tell us each issue as raised in front and in full glare of the whole CIA, we will get to a very conclusive and a very and moving on, the post-mortem on bodies exhumed from the Shaka Hollow graves continued on Monday, led by Chief Government Pathologist Johansen Odwar. The exercise was conducted on 34 bodies, bringing the total number of bodies undergone the post-mortem to 79. According to Odwar, out of the 34 bodies, 22 were of adults and the remaining 12 being children. So today we managed to do a total of 34 post-mortems. And of these uh, 34 postmortems, uh, 21 of, of them were f female, while 10 were males. Three of these we are unable to determine uh, the sex and gender, reason being that uh, they were badly decomposed. Uh, as for the age, 22 of them were adults, while 12 were children. 
So we found that most of them were severely decomposed, being that 22, 32 of them were severely decomposed, why two of them were moderately decomposed. As per the cause of death, being that there were many of them we found that were very badly decomposed, we are unable to get the cause of death in 22 of them, while 12 of them we saw features which look like of starvation. So that is all for today. Uh, we took samples as usual for further analysis of uh, DNA because many of them were unidentifiable. So we took samples which the government chemists will go and they do DNA process on so that now they can be able to be identified. Still on the Shakahola story, High Court Judge Justice Lawrence Mugambi has suspended Shakahola Commission of Inquiry from the President William Ruto on the 4th of May to investigate Shakahola deaths. The judge in his ruling said that Azimio has reasonably demonstrated that its case had merit, adding that the Senate Committee and other institutions are also carrying out similar investigations. In a significant development, High Court Judge Justice Lawrence Mugambi has issued a suspension order against the Shakahola Commission of Inquiry, which was established by President William Ruto to investigate the Shakahola deaths. The judge in his ruling expressed that Azimio had presented compelling evidence indicating the validity of their case, emphasizing that the creation of the commission appears to undermine the constitutional value of judicial independence, casting doubts on its legitimacy. We will begin with the first oath. Still on the corridors of justice, the High Court has decided to extend the freezing of Un Amadi's bank account, maintaining the status quo until a ruling is delivered on the 2nd of June this year. During today's proceedings, the court was presented with arguments urging the opening of the bank accounts as the plaintiffs asserted that they had no dealings with Un Amadi. Lawyer Ocheng Odwal emphasized that there is no evidence indicating that any funds were paid or transferred to Amadi's personal account. The court will deliver its ruling on the 2nd of June, which will determine the fate of Ann Amadi's frozen bank account. David Alex, Look Up TV. Thank you, David, for that detailed report. And that story takes us to a very short break right here on the Spotlight, only on Look Up TV. Don't go far. Remember to tweet us using the hashtag, the Spotlight, using at Look Up TV on Twitter and at Marion Gasho here as well. We'll be back shortly. Happy Madaraka! Msimu huu wa Madaraka, Lotto inakupatia guaranteed 1.2 million dani ya Lotto Madaraka Jackpot. Guess what? Hatutawachia hapo. Tuko na 24 shopping vouchers worth 100k. Kumanisha ni every day, every hour. Tuko na mshindi wa shopping vouchers. Unangoja nini? Changa muka cheza loto. Ndani ya loto madaraka jackpot. Usi wachwe nyuma. Mamili ni moto moto na loto. Nenda kwa Mpesa Pebble number 777-000. Andika neno look kama account name. Cheza da kati ya shilingi hapsini hadi shilingi alfumbili. Na ubambito na loto. Over 18 zoni. Gaming can be addictive. Play responsibly. This message has been approved by the BCLB. Sensei Institute of Technology is the home to the best practical courses, giving you a hands-on experience to handle the world. A place to build your skill and see the world in a different perspective. To join us, 
Ensure you have your national ID card and be ready to enjoy the ride. Sensei College, my skills, my future. Welcome back to the Spotlight right here on Look Up TV with me, Marion Gashuhi. And I'm moving on. CIA Governor uh, James Orengo now says it's a high time that Kenyans take a bold step to address electoral fraud. Orengo blasted the Kenya Kwanzaa administration for recent attacks on Azimio leaders over remarks of secession. Archie Matumona with more on the counter app. <laughs> Speaking at St. Peter's Madungu Anglican Church in Ugunja, Sayer Governor James Orengo noted that the electrical fraud is not only a war but an act of terrorism that requires international intervention while slamming Kenya Kwanzaa allied leader over remarks on the secession. This meeting today takes great exception with the draconian antics that are being employed by the Kenya Kwanzaa formation who are our political op opponents uh, but are attempting to bait the people of Sayer County with food tokens. Uh, and thereby having them register as UDA members. We feel this is uh, unnecessary. Uh, these efforts are being suspiciously championed uh, by government functionaries who ordinarily, their dockets do not contain uh, disaster management or response. <laughs> Elsewhere, the Kenya Disciplinary Forces taking part in Madaraka Day 2023 parade took the initiative of planting trees in Juki Forest in line with the President's directive in embracing the spirit of planting more trees. Was that we must do something about our environment, avoid metal muka through kupitia miti, kupitia ile maji, water towers about kuna ile maza chemichemi za maji, the akala tuweza kupandisha future yet. This area should be full of tourism from all over the world. That's why ata hii kupanda miti yenyu leo hapa mjukiri forest. Na najua muko na mtandao kubwa sana. I know it will also make sure mjukiri forest imejulikana, Kambudunda imejulikana, Jokiri pale imejulikana, and we will be able to sell it more to the people outside because we want to attract tourism. Thank you so, so much. It's been so much uh, a joy for us. I mean, Embu County has never seen what we've seen here for the last two months. And they, of course, the, the, the climax will be on uh, Thursday. Uh, I saw you um, the day the, the CDF was here, and I, I couldn't help but feel this is great. And uh, I was even more excited to see ladies in the team. Much Finally, learners in Tana River County can breathe a sigh of relief after new schools were constructed by the National Government Construction Development Fund. The new classes will be of great help since the learners will be safe from the dangerous river Tana and wild animals within the area. <laughs> Uh, Mushima ametujengea shule leo nafunguliwa sababu wa shida watoto navuka muto na teseka alhamdulillah saa hii tumepata shule serikali ya watuongeze classroom kama ine tano hivi na pamoja na ofisi ya yani yani esticha reporting for lookup tv i am achi matumona and now a research conducted by the Aga Khan University shows that most millennials and Gen Zs rely on legacy media such as TV and radio stations citing them as credible sources of information as opposed to social media. These findings come at a time when most legacy media houses have resorted to the digital space to tap into the young demographic. This report serves as a call to action for media organizations and industry professionals. According to the Aga Khan University, the research was conducted on millennials and Gen Zs living in urban areas between May and July 2022. The report noted that 60% of the respondents consumed news from legacy media, with other key highlights of the report showing that 52% of the population were motivated to consume news in order to gain awareness of current issues. And interestingly, in a month, more than 60% spent between 1,500 and 3,000. And that is money that is way beyond what most of uh, the subscription models that we have actually ask for us to pay 
in a year. Now, some of the factors that influence uh, the choice of content that they consume, one that I found most interesting is the reputation of the media company airing the story. And then there's also the journalists who've written the story. And I think there's need, therefore, to, to, to come back and ask ourselves, in the current world that is characterized by mis misinformation disorder, and where we don't know so much about the credibility, I think if media houses leverage on this, this is what millennials and Gen Zs are looking for. However, 46% of the respondents wanted the media to talk about different money ventures, while 76% relied on television for general information. ICT Cabinet Secretary Elwi Dowalo, who attended the launch of the report, lauded the institution noting that the report would aid media stakeholders in channeling their products and planning on ways to position themselves in the new generation. The future indeed is the youth and our future is digital. Of course, legacy media still remains the most respected and trusted source of news. I'm informed, however, that the findings of this study suggest that rather than assume that all the Gen Zs and millennials want entertainment or entertaining content, news media organizations need to make the significant issues that affect society relevant to the young people and position them appropriately for them. What ranking the youth as the largest media consumer, the media has been challenged to diversify its content to align with the needs of the consumer demographic that has now taken on the digital space. Juliet Chepkoech, Look Up News, Nairobi. And now in sports stories, Kakamega Golf Club has booked their place in the KCB East Africa Golf Tour Finals after scoring 114 points to clinch the overall title of the tour's fifth leg hosted at Kakamega Golf Course. The grand finale of the KCB East Africa Gold Tour will be hosted at Karen Country Club in Nairobi in November 2023. <laughs> It's awesome. I feel so great. It's such a wonderful moment. It's so exciting. And I'm just happy on behalf of the team. We're just excited that we made it to the final. I know we are now going to face the, the, the cream of the cream. I know we are going to face real golfers out there. And I think we have ample time. Uh, I, I believe we have now a chance to even engage the pros. We're going to be trained by the pros. We're going to engage into very deep uh, practice. We're not going to really waste chance, any chance. Any time we have, we shall practice. And I think what we are going to do, one strategy is that we are going to practice as a team. So any time we have any chance, we'll be going out as a team and even inviting the pro to come and train us. And I think, um, if I can talk on behalf of my team, I think each one of us will have to identify his or her areas of weaknesses so that when we invite the pros, we'll be telling them this is our area of need. So that when we practice, we are practicing specifically to correct those areas. FKF Premier League reigning champions Tasca FC were held into a barren draw against title rivals Gormahia in the FKF Premier League round of 31 clash played at Nyaya Stadium. Tasca are currently leading the FKF Premier League with 65 points, just a point ahead of Gormahia who are in second place with 64 points. I thought we score a goal, but the Leisman refused. Across from right, it cannot be an offside position, but that's the way it is. But uh, all in all, the game was balanced. We got some chances, we did bar it, and that is draw, 0-0. Zero, zero. I'm happy we did consider, and we are still on top. We are going to fight until the end. We can be up and down, but as far as you are consistent and uh, you are focused on what you are doing. We maintain Gormai, we contain them. Second half, they started playing long behind us. Uh, I wonder, and I'm surprised 
even Gorma can play long balls. It, I thought it is Tasca. <laughs> it was a big challenge, you know, I thought we created some chances. Um, a bit unlucky, Austin's had an air shot in the first half, there's been one or two others, you know, again Austin's broke free, and it's just unfortunate it's in a moment when um, both Bonfils Amondi and Loas are both on the same side of the pitch, there was no right winger in the moment. And again, we've had a couple of free kick opportunities, but yeah, I thought overall, you know, look, I think a draw is probably a fair result. Um, but you have to go back and look. And look, I know we don't have VAR in this league, and it's probably a while before we are. But it's a definite red card for Otieno in the first half. When you go back, he elbows Desnanga not once but twice off the ball. When it happens the first time, we call the fourth official's attention to it. And then it happens again five or ten seconds later. Off the ball, direct elbow to the head. And it's... It, if there was VAR or if the lines person or the referee sees it, it's a definite red card. Well, that story is it for now here on the Spotlight. But before we end, I'd like to read some of the comments that I've received on Facebook and other social media platforms. I see James Kenya saying to go on. Thank you, James, for watching Spotlight. Same to Newton Kenya says, looks great. Uh, Pablo Moja says, good evening. Pablo, good evening to you too. And thank you for watching the Spotlight right here on Luka TV. Christopher Oko, thank you so much for tuning in during uh, the Spotlight Bulletin right here on Luka TV. And thank you so much for tuning in and watching this amazing and informative uh, bulletin. As well, you can find us on Twitter. And before I go over there, I can see some other comments coming in right here on Facebook. I can see Pablo Moja saying watching. Thank you so much, Pablo. And, so, and also Quincy Akado is watching from Nairobi. Quincy, thank you so much for watching. Hashtag the spotlight and hashtag trending news. I see Simon Peter says congratulations and we are already watching. Same to Chasey says watching trending news. These are loyal viewers of the spotlight right here on Nuka TV. Thank you so much for watching. Same to each and every person who has tuned in to watch the spotlight this very hour. Continue engaging with us on Twitter at Look at TV using the hashtag the spotlight and also at Marion Vashohe. Now from all of us here, thanks very much for watching the spotlight only on Look at TV and do have a wonderful and lovely evening. I'm Marion Vashohe and bye for now. value your feedback and welcome your comments.